Hello friends, Steve from Southern Illinois here, the Fairfield Seventh-day Adventist Church, and welcome to Text Talks. Last week we looked at uh, passages from the Bible that refer to death as sleep, one of the three common perspectives that Christians uh, have taught through the centuries regarding what happens at death. This week we're going to look at a uh, another question that comes up when we talk about death. When do we receive our reward? So let's just pop right into it here, shall we? What happens at death? When do we receive our rewards? The first passage I want us to look at is Exodus chapter 20 verses 5 and 6. This Exodus chapter 20 is where the Ten Commandments are found. So this is a common document uh, for all Christian persuasions. And the passage we're looking at comes from the second commandment. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generations of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. And just what does that have to say about death and when we receive our rewards, Steve? Nothing. Okay. The Old Testament, when it talks about the rewards of following God, by and large, most of the time, it's talking about the immediate rewards that happen in this lifetime. <clears throat> Can you imagine a world where everybody lived their lives in accordance with the Ten Commandments? No lying. No stealing. No cheating on wives and husbands no covetousness or greed or wanting what other people have no murder that would be heaven on earth and those are the rewards that we receive from obedience in this lifetime without any divine intervention or manipulation. Much of the drama that we experience in our lives comes because we are living in a fashion that God never designed us to live. And we reap the fruit of our life. Or others around us are living lives in, uh, in violation of the Ten Commandments. So throughout the Old Testament, this perspective prevails that it talks about the rewards that come in this lifetime. Now, as a doctor training to help people change their behavior uh, to be more healthy, one of the things that we've learned in healthcare is that giving people a distant benefit, if you do this today, 25 years from now, you're less likely to have a heart attack. That doesn't carry much power in terms of behavioral change. On the other hand, if you find immediate benefits that you can emphasize, uh, people are much more likely to change. We, we like to feel good about what we're doing now as well as in the future. And the Old Testament is very now focused. This is what's going to happen in your life if you follow God. So throughout the Old Testament, the Bible concentrates on present rewards by and large. Now last week we looked at Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Uh, this is the passage that, uh, well you'll recognize it when we read it, okay. Uh, but Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and um, I'm going to read verses 5 and 6 again. Except I want to be in Ecclesiastes, not Isaiah. Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 6. For the living know that they shall die, 
but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is gotten. The writer of Ecclesiastes is speaking out of this context, the emphasis on the immediate rewards, the temporal, the now rewards. <clears throat> and those come to an end when we die. Okay? At death, you can't take anything with you. That's one of the basic uh, realities of life, both physical and spiritual. We also read Daniel 2 last week, and I want us to revisit that this week because it too addresses this question. Daniel 12, verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. This is one of the passages in the Old Testament that talks about future reward. And it pegs it to the resurrection, when the dead are called back to life. The dead who are sleeping um, are awake, and some are rewarded with everlasting life, and some with everlasting disgrace. So, that's what the Old Testament picture is. A primary a primary pr uh, emphasis on the present rewards in this life, but several mentions of future rewards occurring after death. What do we find in the New Testament? Maybe here we find the emphasis on immediate rewards at death that we find so ubiquitous uh, in our culture. Matthew chapter 5, and I'm going to read excerpts from verse 12 and verse 46. This is the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew's uh, collection of the sayings and teachings of Jesus. Matthew 5 verse 12, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And if you read the verses around that, this is the end of the Beatitudes, the blessedness. And he's saying, blessed are you if men persecute you, because you will have a reward in heaven. Verse 46, for if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans do so? This is more of an emphasis on the immediate rewards here in on this earth. Okay. And that's what you find throughout the Gospels and throughout the New Testament. An emphasis both on the rewards during this lifetime and the future reward. Matthew 16, 27 speaks to that. Jesus is here talking to his disciples. This is the passage where he tells them that if you're going to follow me, you're going to have to take up your own cross. You're going to have to suffer and sacrifice to follow me. Why would you do that? Well, he goes on to explain. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Jesus speaks of a future reward which we receive when? At his second coming, when he comes in the glory of the Father and with the angels. Nobody ever describes death that way. The second coming is not death. and Death is not the second coming. And yet Jesus says that is when he is going to give the rewards at his coming. 2 Timothy 4, 8. So let's go on to the writings of Paul and the apostles. Maybe our perspective on death comes from their writings. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. Now, this is one of Paul's, Paul, my favorite passages of what Paul writes. He gets, he, he's so colorful here, okay? This, the, the, the book of 2 Timothy is actually a letter to Timothy, a younger man who was his friend and meant, who he was mentor for. And um, Paul is expecting to be executed, to die very shortly. And he has some advice and some requests of Timothy in that context. 
but here here he's he's saying for i am now ready to be offered i am the time of my departure is at hand i have fought a good fight i have finished my course i have kept the faith henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing so he talks about a future reward a crown of righteousness that he will receive after death and he ties that to christ's appearing peter mentions a similar concept in uh, one of his letters first peter chapter 1 verse 4 This is in his greeting to the churches. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Peter speaks of this inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, never fading away, that's reserved in heaven for you and for I. And he ties that to Christ's resurrection as the evidence of our hope. Now, Revelation, the last book in the Bible, is a prophetic book speaking to future events and uh, verse, chapter 11, verse 18 is, is par for the course here. So this is referring to a future event. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged. So he's speaking of the time of the judgment of the dead. We read last week about the two resurrections, one before and one after, with a time of judgment going on throughout that thousand years. And that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldst destroy them which destroy the earth. So, in this passage in Revelation, the giving out of rewards is connected to the judgment of the dead, a future event. And finally, uh, we turn to Revelation 22, part of the last three chapters of Revelation, last three chapters of the Bible. Vivian refers this to this as the happily, happily ever after chapters because it talks about what happens after sin has been destroyed, after everything has been put right, and death and suffering are ended. And Jesus says, And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. There you have it. The Old Testament speaks of the rewards that we receive in this life and give hints of rewards after death. Jesus talks about rewards both in this life and in the future, which he ties to his return. He will come back with the rewards. Paul and Peter talk about a future reward. Paul ties that to the appearing of Christ, just as like Jesus did. Peter ties it to the resurrection. And then Revelation connects the giving out of rewards to the final judgment of the dead. And Jesus says, I come quickly and my reward is with me. The Bible's clear, friends. There is a reward awaiting us. Not karma, not paybacks, but a special prize for you and for me. All we have to do is accept our need of a Savior and follow Him. 
Thanks for joining me for Text Talks today. I don't know where we'll go next week, but the Bible is full of riches for us to mine and uncover. Have a good week. Be safe. Be prudent. But above all, keep looking up. And I'll see you again.